So yeah, as you can tell, I'm on holiday. <laughs> Deservedly. Well, I brought some of the best ones with me. So I will be doing like a comparison with very soon. I've got the S9 and I've got the P20. Not the P20, but well, I've got the P20 Pro as well. But I'm going to do a comparison with S9 and P20 because I feel that they're both dual camera systems and they're more fairly matched really. So, and also I think the P20 is very underrated and I think that's due to the fact that the P20 Pro was just so amazing. But the P20 is still a very good handset. So stay tuned, I'm gonna go around down into those mountains back there. You can see. I'm gonna have go for a little walk, compare the two phones and see how they go. Right, first of all, apologies for the sound in that last piece. I'm on Lanzarote and it truly is the windiest place I've ever been to. But anyway, here we have the Huawei P20 versus the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. And this is going to be a straight comparison between the two cameras on these flagships. First, we're starting off at 1080p, 30 frames per second. And as you can see from these shots, both of these phones perform brilliantly. Nice rich colours on both and lovely smooth stabilised footage. There's not much in it at this point. At this quality, they're shooting at around about the same bitrate. 13 megabits per second for the Huawei and 14 megabits per second for the Samsung. But if we switch to 60 frames per second, straight away you notice a bigger difference. With the Huawei's, as soon as you go above 1080p or 30 frames per second, you lose the video stabilizer, which is such a shame because I think the stabilizer on the Huawei is probably one of the best you can get. Again, the bit rates are very close at this quality. 27 megabits per second for the Huawei versus 28 for the Samsung. All right, moving up to 4K. So max quality on the Huawei P20 is 4K at 30 frames per second, while the Samsung maxes out at 4K at 60 frames per second. This is also reflected in the data rate. The 4K from the Huawei is shooting at 40 megabits per second, while the Samsung is managing 70 megabits per second. And as you can see, there's no stabilizer on the Huawei, but the stabilizer on the Samsung does struggle a lot more when it's shooting at 4K. It's nowhere near as smooth as it was at 1080p. And looking at this footage, I'm wondering if it's even on at all. Both of these phones have a fantastic dual pixel autofocus system. The system was created by Canon originally and is the best autofocusing system you can get at the moment. Much better than the autofocusing system that's in my GH5 that shot this. All right, let's move over to the photos now and we'll take a look at the Huawei P20 first. Now this shot has a lot of detail in it from all the small rocks and the P20 does a nice job of it. And if we crop in 100%, it does start to lose some of the detail and things start to get a little bit blocky. Compared to the Samsung, we have a much brighter shot. The HDR recovering more detail from the shadows than it did with the P20. Although we have lost the detail in the clouds with the Samsung. And if we crop in 100%, to me this image seems a lot cleaner than it did on the Huawei. More detail has been retained and the image seems sharper. The Samsung definitely producing a better image with this particular shot. Here's another nice image from the Samsung, retaining lots and lots of detail and pretty accurate colours. Cropping 100% and you still have a very detailed usable shot. But if we compare it to what the Huawei can do, again, another beautiful shot. However, this one seems to be photoshopped, for want of a better phrase. The Huawei clearly increasing the saturation on the colours and even adding some vignette around the edges. The result is a beautiful shot. And if we crop in 100%, much of the detail has been retained. But again, it's not quite as clean as the S9 Plus, probably due to the extra sharpening that the P20 has applied to the image. Let's take a look at the portrait mode now. Known as aperture mode on the P20 and live focus on the S9 Plus. This takes two pictures, one of the subject and one of the defocused background, and then merges them together to give you a portrait style shot. I deliberately chose this bush because I knew that neither of them would be able to get a perfect shot here. The subject is just too complex for it to stitch it together perfectly, but I have to say they both do a very good job and there really is nothing in it. Again here with a much easier subject, they both perform just as expected with the Samsung having a noticeable longer focal length, giving a slightly narrower angle of view, which is more associated with portrait shots, but they both perform really well here. For macro shots, they both excel. Move these phones close to your subject and they'll both switch to their telephoto lens and give you a really sharp, detailed close-up view. Although the P20 doesn't get as close as the S9 Plus, it does in my opinion however give a better shot with richer colours and better quality bokeh or blurry background. As the Huawei has shot this at f1.8, it's going to have a slightly more blurrier background than the Samsung which was shot at f2.4.
I wanted to share this HDR picture with you guys because I thought it was really interesting on both of the devices. You can clearly see that two photos have been taken here. One of the sky with a low as exposure as possible and another of the rest of the scene, this time taken at a much higher exposure to help to reveal the details on the ground. This is a very challenging scene for any camera, although it seems like the Samsung's dual aperture is helping out a lot here, allowing for much slower shutter speeds and getting a much better exposure of the sun and the sky. With the tree, it's probably even more of a difficult shot for the camera to pick up the detail in the tree. Again, in my opinion, I think they both perform really well and give quite stylized results. Moving inside now, and although the light is fairly low in here, it shouldn't be anything that would bother any of these two cameras. The Huawei's AI in this shot, I think though, has picked up the greenery and has sort of tinted the whole scene green, as well as adding its usual vignette and sharpening. It's a little bit frustrating because sometimes the AI can give you a beautiful shot and then sometimes it can ruin the shot. We take a look at the Samsung and in my opinion, this is a much more pleasing image. Far less processing is going on. Don't get me wrong, the Samsung does do a fair amount of processing, especially at night with noise reduction. This shot is fairly low light. The only real light sources are coming from the balconies. There is a few coming from the ground, but they're not that strong. I think the Samsung does a fairly good job, all things considered. There is a little bit of noise in the sky and the details from the leaves in the trees is pretty much lost. If I crop in on those trees, you can see what I mean. But overall, it's a fairly nice and clean image. For the Huawei, I've taken the same shot but using the famous night mode. This is a four second exposure and it's a much more pleasing image than the Samsung. Still evidence of a bit of noise in the sky, but there's more detail in the trees, probably from the extra sharpening. I find that the night mode is excellent, but only really with the right conditions. In this shot, there's a bit more light available and the Samsung does a great job, I think, keeping noise to a minimum and there's a fair amount of detail there too. This next shot is just a normal photo from the Huawei not night mode and it does an okay job there's a little bit of noise there and the image isn't quite as bright and as pleasing as the samsung but it's not bad considering the available light to the naked eye that tree's dark there is a small light coming from underneath but it only reaches halfway up the trunk so i bet you're thinking this would be a great shot for the huawei p20's night mode well not really there's a lot more noise the colors have kind of washed out overall it's not a pleasing picture at all and i much prefer the normal shot from the huawei p20 another really nice and clean low noise shot from the Samsung. There is a little bit of flare in there coming from the moon. The Samsung lens does seem to flare quite easily. The shadows and the highlights have been balanced well, so you get a great end result. The Huawei again does a fairly good job here using normal photo mode. There's a little bit more noise than the Samsung, but overall the image is fairly nice. But again, for some reason here, the night mode on the Huawei P20 creates a much noisier image and the highlights and shadows have been equalized too much. So it's quite a flat scene, again with washed out colors. So maybe there's a bit too much going on here for the P20's master AI to really nail this shot. Let's move on to the low light video performance. This is the Huawei at the moment and it's doing a great job if you ask me. But let's put it side by side with the Samsung and also compare the recorded audio quality. In the next clip, the first half of the audio you will hear is the Samsung and the second half is the Huawei. For me, that's a clear win for the Huawei, audio-wise. The recorded sound to me sounds much louder while still keeping the same color quality as the Samsung. In my experience, Huawei's always have good sound. I still think the P20 Pro has the best stereo speaker system on a phone so far. The P20 has a single speaker, but it still sounds very good too. So to conclude, I think these are both very, very good handsets when it comes to photo and video. But for me, the S9 Plus has got the edge. 4K at 60 frames per second is just outstanding and shot at the highest bit rate that I've seen on a phone so far. The 1080p footage at 30 frames per second on the Huawei is excellent. I just really wish that stabilizer would work in 4K or even at least 60 frames per second 1080p because it's so good at 30 frames per second. Better in my opinion than the one on the Samsung. For me, the master AI on the P20 sometimes gets it so right, but then sometimes gets it so wrong too. When you are shooting with it, it's a good idea to wait a second so the AI can work out what type of scene it's shooting. Hopefully the system will improve over time, but you do get fantastic shots from this thing, especially the portrait shots. Anyway, that's it from me. 
I hope you enjoyed my little look into the camera systems of these two flagships. Let us know in the comments below which one you think is best. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more news and reviews of all the latest phones coming very soon. I've been David Wildman and this was BTECT.